I'm going to be talking to Amanda Hall, CEO of Summit Nanotech. Her company, her Calgary-based company, recently closed a second round of financing for 50 million U.S. And this story is important for a couple of reasons. One, it's a homegrown uh, technology uh, company with with uh, world-leading technology. And secondly, uh, it came out of the oil and gas industry. Uh, Amanda is a geophysicist by training and uh, worked in the oil and gas industry and mining for many years. So welcome to the interview, Amanda. Thanks, Mark. I'm great to see you again. Well, likewise. Now, this is really exciting that you have closed this round of, of finance. And give us a, just an overview of, of the process and, and uh, what you plan to do with proceeds. Yeah, it's been interesting raising capital in this environment, of course, because of all of the dynamic economic uncertainties around the world today. So uh, the tech sector has been struggling, but that's good for clean tech because we're hard science, not software. And so Summit Nanotech has done well raising capital just because we're actually building equipment and putting it in the field and processing a commodity rather than writing software and selling licenses. So a very different business model, a very strong business model that's backed by a commodity that's in high demand. And so raising a $50 million round was not that hard, to be honest. Like, And I say that kind of tongue in cheek because my team and I worked our butts off to do this, but it was, we turned investors away because there was so much interest and we ended up with an amazing uh, amazing cohort of investors ranging from uh, BDC Capital to Evoke Innovations who led the round with um, a good strong lead position and then we brought in follow-on investors from Volta, Grantham, NGP and Helios. So a really strong syndicate of investors and then they merged with my existing investors from our Series A and then that was uh, Capricorn Technologies, sorry, Capricorn um, LLP. Sorry, I'm saying their name wrong. And uh, and Zora Innovations, as well as BHP, BHP Ventures. Now, we've been doing a number of interviews recently about financing clean tech. And one of the things I find interesting about your round is Evoc Innovations is based in Vancouver. BDC Capital is actually a federal crown corporation. Volta Technologies, we know because uh, James Frith uh, one of the partners there has been interviewed. We've interviewed him many times about battery technology. In fact, that's how we found out about your your round. And it's so this is a, a, a an interesting cohort, as you call it, of of uh, uh, investors. Is it now the case that Canadian companies like yours with innovative technology, you're scaling up, can now draw on a global pool of capital instead of worrying about just you know raising that capital in Canada? Yeah, and in fact, the Series A, we didn't have any Canadian investors because it was too risky from a Canadian investor threshold perspective. Um, so we had to go international, which is why my lead investors from the Series A were from the USA and Singapore and Australia. So we had to leave Canada to get backing at a young age as a company. And then once the technology was piloted and in the field, we came back to Canada and looked for Canadian investment. So there's like a bit of a gap there between support from the Canadian kind of ecosystem, where you get a lot of support when you're small and coming off the bench um, in terms of research and development. But then there's this gap before you pilot that where you're scaling that you don't get a lot of support from Canada. So, uh, and my story is not unique. I've heard this from many CEOs that they had to leave Canada before they could come back and get uh, high high caliber investors here. That jives very much with what we've been told. There's sort of this valley of death, exactly as you described it. Funding off the bench and and a lack of funding between that and your and your demonstration project or your or your pilot project. So, uh, kudos on you on attracting international capital uh, for the, to bridge the valley of death. Mm -hmm. And uh, looks like you're hopefully you're on the other side of that. Now, many of our viewers today won't uh, maybe have seen the previous interviews that you and I have done. Could you give us a brief overview of your technology, please? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we've invented a very um, unique and sustainable lithium selective sorbent. And so it's a material that is made at the nanoscale that we, we invented it ourselves. So we take this sorbent and we put it into large columns 
and these large columns are then deployed in the field. And we drill holes in the ground to pull brine out from about 200 meters deep. And I'm talking about South America right now, not Canada. In Canada, you'd have to drill 2000 meters deep to get to the brine. But in South America, it's really shallow. So drill 200 meters, pull brine to the surface, run it through our nanomaterials and the lithium sticks inside the materials. Everything that's not lithium flows through the column and we put it back underground, we re-inject it. And so the column then is full of lithium. So we wash the lithium off the column with water and then we recover that water and reuse it again. So that's pretty much the process in a nutshell. Um, at the end of the day, we end up with higher yield lower OPEX and better ESG metrics compared to the traditional process. So it's something that the miners are really excited about. Yeah, I can understand why. I mean, my understanding of lithium mining is that you mine the the ore and then it has to be separated and, and it's, uh, it's I guess it becomes a slurry and then it's put in uh, evaporation ponds. And the whole process takes 18 months, which is not only time consuming, but but of course raises costs. Whereas uh, your technology, I mean, you do it all in less than a day. Yeah, yeah. It reduces the timeline to market dramatically. <laughs> yeah. What kind of a, a, a scale, uh, what kind of an improvement in costs are we talking about here, Amanda? So from an OPEX perspective, we're about $1,000 cheaper per ton of lithium produced than the traditional process, which is great. Uh, but the CapEx is where we really do save the miners a lot of money because we shrink their land use area by 26 times and we double yield. So we get way more product from the same volume of brine and in a smaller container. And so the CapEx reduction is, is very significant. So we're about half the CapEx of a traditional mining process. And uh, you also have another unique feature of your business model uh, from the sounds of it in that you will actually, or Summit will, will actually own the technology. Like you'll have yeah. the equi own the equipment out in the field. Yeah, we want to deploy it as an extraction service where we come in, uh, integrate into the existing infrastructure, take over that piece of the whole process that does the extraction, but operate the equipment ourselves. And luckily it's all automated with controls and instrumentation. And so we don't need actual humans there operating unless it needs maintenance, but we can operate it from remotely using our control systems and our sensors. Now, you've got this pilot project in Chile. How's it going? Great. It's going really well. Yeah, the engineers were all smiles um, with the first pilot partner. We have six pilot partners. First one went through. Everything was fantastic. We're working on number two right now. And again, the team even said the second partner is going even better than the first. So it's going really well. How difficult or how easy, I guess, is it to scale your technology, Amanda? Oh, it's not easy, <laughs> largely because of the amount of money it takes. So to move from our little $5 million pilot to a demonstration scale, it's going to cost us about $20 million. And so you can see how raising $50 million doesn't last long in this space. Um, and so once we prove it at demo, we still have to scale one more time to get to commercial, which means I'll be coming back to investors at the end of next year or the end of this year, actually, to say, okay, we proved it at demo, now we need to go one more time. And then and then we'll do a big raise, probably closer to 150 to 200 million. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, all I hear in the, in the business press is <laughs> uh, efforts to uh, increase the supply of lithium because of course, as electric vehicles expand, the batteries are gonna require lithium. And it just seems like you're in the perfect space at the perfect time. Yeah, as a commodity, it's a good one to be involved with. Um, it's not commoditized yet, so the price is very unusually um, driven. So we could have uh, price uh, engagements or agreements with different customers for different prices, and it's out of our control. We're trying to tie pricing back to a benchmark, but it's really hard to do without it being actually commoditized. So it's a little bit up in the air. It makes It makes future modeling of financials um, challenging, but... At the end of the day, the car companies are paying everything that they can to get the supply chain secure, and we're part of the supply chain. So I, I don't think we'll have any problem with financials in the future. Final question for you. Um, one of the uh, themes that comes up over and over again when I talk to you know clean energy technology companies 
is the importance of human capital of people. Mm -hmm. And are you able to find enough, uh, you know, <clears throat> technical folks in Alberta uh, to, you know, meet all of your needs? Short answer is yes. We have 70 employees right now and 68 of them are from Alberta. <laughs> so um, we're recruiting uh, into the Vancouver, BC area and Toronto. And we have a subsidiary in Chile with, that we're hiring into as well. But we've got 13 Calgarians working full time in Chile right now. And uh, yeah, it's it's great because Albertans have the grit, the experience and the courage to do resource extraction. Not everyone has that in their upbringing, but we do. So it's a good pool to draw from. Is the oil and gas drilling expertise and experience that's available in the market, is it exactly what you need? Yes, exact same. Excellent. Well, Amanda, uh, we wish you the very best and hopefully we'll have another interview with you later this year, or early next year, and uh, the news will be even better. Thanks, Markham. Appreciate it.